Life is good when you're around. Bonus points if you know where that's from. And here we go. It's the 1988 Corey Feldman, Corey Haim vehicle, License to Drive. And it just says on the screen there, Davis Entertainment's production, Corey Haim, uh, by the stop sign, and uh, Corey Feldman by a yield sign. Uh, not the actual uh, pictures, just the in text. It's kind of funny, it's like certain things I always think we're quite similar to America for, but yield is um, a sentence we don't really or a phrase we don't really get that much in this country. Richard Massore, he's a clerk from The Thing. Watch Clark, Heather Graham. Always kind of funny about like this film, though, because this is one of them films, and a bit like with... Oh, oh, oh I was going to say Nina Simiesko. I always say... Um, that Simiesko, I always think of Young Guns. Um, but yeah, but this film and the Corey, the Corys in general, I was a big fan of him in the 80s, or was a fan of him in the 80s, I should say. But more recently, I've I've really come to appreciate the films way more than you know. They've really uh, got better and more of appreciation. Lawrence G. Paul he produced um, uh, was it I think uh, Commando and Escape from LA. I like how the different uh, road signs are coming up and like road markings and everything. It's kind of cool. Directed by Greg Beeman. I probably said this on a few commentaries, but that's one thing I really do miss. And this sounds absolutely insane saying it even by my standards. But films that are directed by people you've never heard of, like literally, if I didn't check now, and there's no disrespect at all, I feel like I've never seen that name before. And I feel like a total hypocrite because when people say, Oh, I don't know who directed this film, I'm like, Okay, you not possibly know that. But it's so kind of quaint where these were these huge theatrical hits and that's supposed to have a pretty good pedigree but I don't really recognise that name where now it's like you know, the same, you know, I hate naming names because I feel like well, you know, it's just the first thing that's popping up, but like now I feel like every film's like a J.J. Abrams, Abrams film or Zack Snyder film, you just go oh yeah it's, you instantly know that name you know, oh here we go again, that kind of thing this is a kind of great opening though, very reminiscent of uh, Freddy's Dead I noticed as well when I was watching it yesterday, and it's partly the reason why I'm doing this commentary, but it was on um, Sky yesterday, like in the middle of the afternoon, and it was just like, you know, sort of, oh, a great reason to watch it. But yeah, like when I was watching it yesterday, the hospital at the end, when uh, Corey's driving his uh, mum to the hospital, his name, Hal Dale. It might just be a pure coincidence. But what's really funny though as well, and I know you can only go off like sort of, uh, things you grew up with or experience you've been involved with but pretty much the first Elm Street film I ever saw was in that Man Elm Street 2 and it starts like this with a dream sequence on a school bus and then this must have been one of the very first two Corey's films I ever saw or I'm more familiar with so it's kind of weird that like you know so much of 80s culture can be condensed into dream sequences on school buses or like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or something Good stunt there, just having it at the back of the um, school bus. So about when this was on Sky Movies, though, I'll have to try and find the tweet if I can. Uh, you know, uh, d don't hold me to it, though, as always. But um, I remember once I, I'd been somewhere, first thing in the morning, I'd go somewhere. I can't remember where now. But um, I remember it was on at 9 o'clock in the morning, and there was one beer in the fridge. And I always kind of, quote-unquote, pride myself on the fact that I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> but then I just thought, oh... License to drives on, and I'll, I'll have a beer at night, nine o'clock in the morning. Just seemed the right thing to do. Well, I should say, I pride myself on the fact that, oh, I've never been alcoholic because I don't drink first thing in the morning or whatever. And then every so often I'll be like, why am I drinking at nine in the morning? Was, ah. That's always a Ferrari there. I always think of it as a, a Ferrari Testa Rossa, but it's the, um, the Magnum Ferrari. Oh, it's always kind of funny though as well because I have got the VHS of this. It's just sitting over there, a great tape, but I've decided to do it from like the HD version. But like I say, I'm so used to say, you know, like growing up with these films or like say only just becoming more familiar with them. 
but seeing it like on a relatively big TV HD, like I say, I'm more used to watching like say the VHS and you know maybe even drunk and stuff. But when you're watching things and you sort of you can uh, you know you can sometimes see a stunt double or or see like oh I mean you know but to be fair it, it was pretty uh, solid sequence all things considered. But this is one thing what's funny actually. I nearly said at the start of the commentary, oh, this was about six years before, because I'm pretty sure when I first used the internet, was it like, I'm pretty sure it was like 94, that seems, that seems like that can't be right. Uh, but like, what I, uh, oh, there's some interesting graffiti there, I'll have to try to pause that later on. Uh, but um, yeah, this is not that far off, like the internet and things like that, and everybody having like, you know, access to like, you know, mobile phones and I know they were getting in the 80s and stuff anybody who's listened to the commentary yeah, any one of my commentaries I can't stop banging on about oh in the 80s we had stuff but it is fascinating I can remember watching educational films at school on projector and it seems so weird now that that just seems like a million years ago it really does it, it you know it's kind of one of them things where and like there, and I did think about this as well because I read a quote about this and obviously, you know, you know sometimes you know, it could just be made up. Well, but apparently there's a quote from Corey Feldman and Corey Hayne that said, um, if you want it on this bit like the Simpsons there, he's writing on the, on the board and stuff, I will drive safely. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, a quote from Corey Hayne and Corey Feldman said, if you want to see drug abuse, watch this film because he said they were high on drugs doing it. And like there, how... Um, he was uh, giving Mercedes like a cigarette and lighting into stuff. But that just seems like now, if you did that in a film or you found out two pretty young kids were like high on drugs while making a film, like the controversy it would be and like some of the crazy stuff that happens in this film, like when she's passed out in the car and Corey Feldman takes pictures of her and stuff. And it's just aged so weirdly in that regard. And this is one thing as well, like there now, Mercedes is getting in that Ferrari and uh, yeah, and stuff but that's one thing being like a British school kid like there is some schools around by me that you can be 18 and go there so technically you legally can drive and stuff and I even have seen a couple of school kids like in cars like driving home and stuff but to me the thought of going to school in like a, any kind of car let alone a Ferrari is just like unbelievable all oh, the two Corys I mean that's one of those things as well, like sort of they're like going a going a backy uh, for want of a better word on a bike. I mean that's just so eighties. And then when you think in this as well, like in a bit like later on, he uh, takes his driving test on like a computer, and that just seems like so far ahead of the game. Like you know, like I, I feel like nobody said the. Uh, the driving test on a computer in England until about I mean obviously it's movie so you've got to take the grain of salt you know may or may not have existed but just even as a even as a concept I don't hear I didn't hear anybody talk about the theory driving test in the UK till about uh, 2001 that's interesting I've seen the grandpa plates on the Cadillac uh, because there's actually I think it's a German title for this film it's called Daddy's Cadillac which I guess is kind of true it's uh uh what's his name josh i think his name josh uh, Corey hames character i guess it's his dad's cadillac but considering he's the main character or one of the main or the, you know, the principal lead basically or you know the co-principal lead which i think is a sentence i've ever said it's sort of not true what's weird the uh, cory Feldman still looks like that but that's one thing i was going to say and like again, it's kind of ridiculous thing to say when saying that oh, they, they were on drugs as kids. It's probably not you end know, up the best outcome necessarily. But can you believe when I live in a world where there's one Corey? It's like how the hell did that happen? I've got my. This is becoming a semi-regular feature now. My half cold cup of coffee. <laughs> What I always think is quite funny though as well because um, like quote unquote nowadays there's always always the eighties there wasn't no strong women in the eighties and like the uh, the mother character in this and she's also the ghost of Christmas present in Scrooge. I feel like you know you could say it was traditional she's a housewife and a mother and all those kind of things which you know you could say that's 
bad, even though, you know, if, if it wasn't for mothers and housewives, I don't know, it, it, I think most houses would have burnt down in the 80s, but uh, just in general terms, it's nice to have, um, you know, if you've got a, a father that cooks or a father that cleans, you know, it, it's good to have, anyway, a good, strong parenting role model, but I think she's quite a strong character in this and sort of you know, she doesn't take up no crap and I say when you when you think of the same actress in Scrooge and she literally kicks Bill Murray's ass in that it's kind of funny to hear people saying oh there was no strong women in the 80s and even like say uh, Corey Haim's brother in this uh, sorry Corey Haim's sister in this I was thinking it's her, you know, her brother's Corey Haim but she's like quite a strong character like you know it's like, oh you know she's got like more to her than just oh I'm just a girl like you know kind of thing so it's, it's kind of funny in some ways that like the 80s the 70s and 80s always get this bad rap for like you know women were this and men were that and I think it's a lot more complicated than that but one thing I do always think is funny and again with movies, you obviously always have to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And um, it, no pun intended, because I'm going to be talking about this dinner scene. But we did used to sit around the dinner table in the eighties. Like I felt like we used to have breakfast, like in the eighties. Like, like my mum would be cooking the breakfast, and my dad would have his breakfast before we went work. And I've never really been a big fan of breakfast, but I'd be there. You know, I'd have like a cup of tea or whatever, uh, or like some oat cakes on a Sunday if we were. F- been particularly fancy as no it's a stoppage reference there uh but yeah this of everybody having the uh dinner around the dinner table in 1988 was quite rare or i don't really remember doing it that much all things considered But this is what's always funny though as well, like this going to like a big party like kind of thing. And I mean, I wasn't the most socially outgoing of people, uh, but like, I don't think I ever went to a party like that. Like, you know, until I was about like 30 and that's almost not a joke either. But what's funny is like, it, the, the way that 80s bums just dropped them off and, and, uh, and, but what's so funny about like the 80s is, to me, it's not that long ago, uh, but when I say would watch films say with me dad, and there'd be a similar scene to this in like say a film from the forties or the fifties, uh, I could see me dad geeking out about like oh look at the cars, look at the the clothes or the hair or the music or whatever, and it seems so funny how how quickly thirty years overnight, <laughs> uh, thirty forty years is just gone like that. But it's like this now, this scene where, like, you know, the punch bowl there and just, you know, the clothes they're wearing. And I don't personally think, you know, like I'm some 80s, well, you know, I was going to say 80s brainwashed moron, which I am, but, yeah, I'll be interested in trying to see what this book that says believe on it. But, yeah, in a lot of ways, I don't think a lot of these clothes have aged that, especially, basically, the clothes um, uh, Corey Haim Corey Haim and Corey Falman are uh, wearing and the person who's with him. I don't, and that dress she's wearing, I don't think they've aged that badly when you, I guess it's, you know, tail end of the 90s and stuff, or sorry, tail end of the 80s into the 90s. So, because 1988, that seems, um, I don't know if that's what you said on uh, this file, I can actually just check, that seems... Oh, I always thought it was like 86 or 87 or something like that. Oh, 1988 on the old <laughs> bring that kind of crazy though as well that's one thing that like even though I've got this huge high regard still for like you know 80s stuff primarily but just just older things like you know some of my favourite films now are 50, 60, 70, 80 years old or whatever but like out there I can literally just pick up my phone in front of me five seconds later confirm a date and I do think that's kind of funny that, like, I would not have it any other way. Like, you look at all those books there on that bookshelf behind him, and you think, though, now there's just be, I know, like, the events be like a relatively posh house. And I, uh, apart from all my dad's Western books, I don't think we had that many books in the house when I was growing up. But, like, now, if you had that many books, you'd make, you're basically like a, a, a library or something. <laughs> I must have said this before in another commentary, but you know, good information is good information always. To to quote the office, sort of kind of. But um, 
I remember Moby once on MTV Cribs saying that you never see bootcases in many celebrities' houses. And when he tuned in, he said, it's like, yeah, you're right. And it's kind of funny, though, now that it probably says a lot about a lot of the people I am. Actually, that, that's actually what I was going to say. A lot of people say, so I go in, I haven't got books, but there's actually a few people I know who've got quite actually big bootcases. So, uh, forget what I've just said. That's one thing as well, like they're looking at Corey Feldman's hair and uh, Heather Graham's hair there and uh, Corey Haim's hair there. And I said this to um, a barber, a woman barber, <laughs> um, I don't know what that means, uh, what last time I had, one well, last time I had my hair cut about two years ago. And I said, that's one thing I miss about the 80s or I'm fond of is the 80s is that how good hair, the hair was. And I know a lot of people know, you know it's like this cliche sort of, you know, embarrassing thing. But I think 80s hair is amazing. I know sometimes you can be biased in, in more fond of things you grew up with. But like even the dad there had super clean hair. Like, you know, this, uh, you know, like really sort of thick and everything. And I do think it's funny though because it's, and I really do think this, it's almost, I think, the only decade, even the 70s or the 60s or even now, but the 80s is almost unique, I think, where if you see a man with long hair and a woman with long hair, they've almost got the exact same haircut, or sometimes the men's haircut is even better. But even, say, if a woman's got short hair, I've seen so many 80s films where a woman's got short hair, which is relatively unique for, say, the time, but then there'll be a guy sitting right next to that person with short hair and a dead similar haircut. I think it's the only decade where men and women had the same haircuts and nobody was that amazed by it, <laughs> you know. But what's really funny though as well, and I didn't click in for such a long time because like I say, I think the thing was just way too scary, like the John Carpenter one. And this is one of those films like I say, pretty sure I did see it as a kid, but they're like there, Richard M Mazur, uh, who plays his dad. I said the start he plays Clark, but it's kind of a really, really good actor, I think, there. It, like, now once I've sort of remembered it and thinking about it, you think, oh, that's Clark from The Thing. But he, I really feel like he looks and acts differently. But this is what's kind of funny, though, as well, because it's only relatively recently my dad stopped driving or his license is, you know, it's funny enough, his license is just, he like, just expired because he's like 80 or whatever. I think it was just sort of too much for him driving. I dare say he could still drive a car now if he really wanted to or had to. But this does just remind me of the 80s so much of like being driven around by my dad and that. But what is kind of terrible though, like I say this film came out in 1988. I was still at school at this point. You fast forward from 1988 to 2017, I still have not had one single driving lesson. But what's especially funny about that is I actually quite like cars. <laughs> And as well, to a bit like John Carpenter, but like this street here, I'd, I'm like 99% sure there it isn't. But if somebody said to me, This is um, the same street as Halloween, I'd be like, Yeah, that makes sense. It actually really looks like one of the streets from Back to the Future, funnily enough. That's also a 1974 Cadillac. I, I only literally read that on, um, oh, what's the name of the website? I think it's 80s Rewind. And it's not 80s Rewind, what is it called? I always think it's called 80s Rewind, but I think it's called something else. But it's a really good website there. Uh, like any 80s film, and they have like little trivia for it and, and things like that. But they said, I think he said they got through nine 1974 Cadillacs, and again, anything with me, 1974, because it was the year I was born, so I was like, oh, 1974. Finish off with uh, my last little bit of coffee. Right there, that shot there, of the dad in the rear view mirror. And I think that's one thing about proper filmmaking. Uh, that I thought well, there's a, a, a channel by this guy named Simon Cade, and he does all these really good short films with like, you know, some great equipment, and he's been doing one recently with like some, you know, cheaper equipment and stuff. And there is, that looks like that looks like the Ferris Bueller house. I think that might actually be the Ferris. Cause there's an aerial on top of the roof. It might be the longest aerial pole I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. But yeah, that one shot there of like the dad in the review mirror and the review mirror being adjusted from inside the car. I think it's little shots like that there. Not unless you get a real exceptional internet filmmaker now and don't get me wrong there's some mate. I'll absolutely love the internet YouTube I wouldn't be without it I don't know what I'd do with my day if YouTube finished but at the same time I feel like when you see a filmmaker 
it just you instantly can tell it's proper filmmaking and like even though now a lot of films are shot digitally and the cameras have changed in a lot of ways and the way films are distributed in some ways has changed I really do feel like when you see real film mate oh it does it say clock I think it says a clock on that uh, oh yeah Oh, that's funny. It says claw. Oh, that's really funny. Uh, I think it's spelt like I think it's not not got the e on, uh, like C L A R K E. I think it is in uh, the thing. But yeah, I saw a trailer last night. I don't think I'd ever seen it before, but it was almost like a Hitchcock would be proud to to, to quote Adam the Woo. It was almost like a Hitchcock trailer of um, like Corey Haim talking to the camera, like saying. Oh, I had one of my license, but I didn't get it, and see you later. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was, it was like, you know, and it was like a, quite a rare trailer and stuff. But it's things like this, though, as well, like how oh, all this kind of, like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Lamar's, uh, Lamar's classes, this, these breathing exercises and, and things like that, and sort of video introduction or video instructional videos, I should say. And it's kind of like this forum to like YouTube, but I read a fact the other day where it said, um, um, this, this is nothing as well. I think they started in this world, like yearbook, something like that picture was there. Uh, but like, I, I would have loved to see a yearbook from when I was at school, but I would have absolutely hated it as well. But yeah, I I read something on the internet that they said uh, somebody uh, built the house from the ground up, just from YouTube tutorials. But that's one thing that I think is completely, you know, as actual as you know, quantum leap in technology. But like now, I honestly don't know what I would do without like like I said, if I mean without YouTube, but like on YouTube now, I use it for so many different things. But I don't this is this is incredible. <laughs> I think when I was watching it the other day, though, that line just cracked me up when uh, Corey, uh, Corey Farmer said, What is this shit? <laughs> a great line, though. It says, If you got it by a speeding car, it, oh, if I caught it, you were 100 miles an hour and you were going 20, would it make any improvement to your face? Just a little bit of an intercom system in the house. But yeah, like this shot, this scene here of him taking his test on a computer, I know I did mention it uh, about five, ten minutes ago. But if anybody is, uh, if anybody's got into 22 minutes of this commentary and has actually took a driving test in America, which is a very specific set of circumstances, uh, I'd love to know if um, this is actually true or like it was like this. But then it's always one of those things I think where I turn the one and you think, oh, just because it's in a movie doesn't mean it's true. But I feel like this is something where um, if it wasn't true, It'd be such a weird thing to put in a film, like why I make everybody take the driving test on a computer, it just seems a pointless thing. If you did take it by writing up his paper, then why not do it like that? It makes no real difference. Because you could just as easily have his you know, paper accidentally you know, get stolen or something spilt on it or something like that. I think it was a Magnavox monitor there. My uh, first DVD player was a Philips Magnavox DVD player. I think Magnavision was where you could also um, switch it and stuff. On the when you switch the region code, oh my god, battery running low. Ah. I was going to send buttons where it said ABC, it's a little bit kind of one kilo, you know, real close. But then again, I mean, you know, if you were just going to your local driving test, if it was just in some. Um, Local driving test centric, could they could be like that? And that's kind of funny though. Now, what was I watching? Amazing, I was watching Little House on the Prairie today, as you do. And there was this kid having a dream, and she was like, she did have sprayed water into her face, it looked like it was sweating. But like there, there, we were sweating the hell out of it. If you'd found miles an hour, you can put a large puddle of water to do, you pump the brakes, gently use your foot off the gas pedal or accelerates. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing whether they did do it on a computer or not in the 80s, that's one thing though, where it says, you have failed like that in massive letters, that was... Well, that's, that's one thing they talk about, like, did they do this, didn't they do this in the 80s, but um, 
I was watching Clockwise for the millionth time yesterday and I went on IMDB while it was just on in the background I noticed one of the messages on the message board said to him I always thought this film was set in the 80s and there's one part right near the start of the film where and to be fair sometimes you can easily miss stuff like this or forget but there's one part at the start of the film where it's using a computer and the date says like the 15th of May 1985 and it's like it's funny to think that like even like you know people can see stuff literally on camera and go what like you know the amount because the amount of people out there i love that's a great scene there though where like says oh well and it just makes no sense saying that like oh well um you know you you're probably the same as your sister so we'll assume you've passed it's like uh okay yeah <laughs> And this is also one of the very few American films I've ever seen, not with the guy who plays Uncle Phil from uh, uh, Fresh Prince, but I think that's worthy of a mention. I'm pretty sure anybody watching, listening to, or who's seen this film will go, yeah, that's Uncle Phil from uh, Fresh Prince. There's also a Fresh Prince song on the soundtrack, or oh, there's a DJ, uh, yeah, DJ says, yeah, Fresh Prince, but was it, I don't know if the Fresh Prince was going then. Yeah, but this is also one of the uh, few films I've seen with the Ford Escort in it. One of the few, well, one of the few American films I should say with the Ford Escort in it. Uh, the car that uh, Corey Hames in. Uh, I love that bit there though as well. That like uh, such a funny thing to think that like uh, you know the only the only thing that's stopping him pass his test is if he spills the coffee on the guy. And it's such a great visual. Like it's such a you know, even this in itself would be a great short movie or animated thing. Which is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that and, and this is one of those things as well. It's such movie like BS or whatever. But I love though, like uh, when he's taking his test and it's like there, he's in this huge traffic jam. He has to park in this space where it almost looks physically impossible to park. And he's trying to get the biting point on this hill, like the world's steepest hill. And again, he probably used like camera angles on that to make it look ten times steeper. But I really love like how we're driving test like sort of the roads are empty and it's like you know, it's just kinda of got this great juxtaposition between the two. It just it just plays off itself really well and talking about watching clockwise yesterday, I think this is like where these kind of comedies like where and like I say, this is a great shot there. I mean, that that hill. I mean, I tell you what, though, whoever the location scout was, find that. Cause that's that. I don't think you could find a better location there. Of like, you know, that looks like the um, the people from Jewel, uh, uh, Jim. <laughs> and they, they, I think that 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 family of people in that kind of old fifties car, and they've been in like every other film. But these films like this, and again, it make it feel like a right old forty duty. But there's been films from the eighties. I mean. Films like this, like Clockwise, like Licence to Drive, uh, the mind's gone completely blank, but some of these like fast movies or caper movies where I feel like, say, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, these films will still be funny because, yeah, there might be little bits even now, like, say, we see like a kid smoking or something, or like, uh, you know, a kid drinking or something, and people, you oh, can't do that nowadays, whatever. But, like, just in just as a general principle, I think these films will still stand up, and uh, especially because I think sometimes comedy is. Mate, on oh, this a Jaguar XJS there I was funny, a Jaguar XJS and a Ford Escort in the same scene. That was ninety percent of my car knowledge in the eighties. Not far off now, to be honest. I think I paused these driving licenses once, and I, I can't remember if they were or weren't the exact same thing. I think. I think they look like exactly the same apart from the pictures changed, but I think they are so different. The cup was empty. <sighs> Not been ready when he uh, spills coffee on himself, although doesn't. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, sometimes I think com comedy is judged unfairly compared to a lot of other genres. But that said, I think that, um, yeah, these, uh, that's such a great picture. I don't think you could do that legally, could you? Pull a smiley face like that. But again, it's hilarious. But yeah, I think comedy sometimes, like, you know, if you're like a couple of years old, you think, God, this used to be funny. Uh, but yeah, I think, like, this is a film that, like, I'll still be funny decades from now. But not just even that. The thing that I do think is kind of sweet about these films, because 
when I was watching on Sky the other day, that's like, you know, you've got to basically subscribe to it and pay for it. And you can, it can even be pin protected and things like that. But just if it's just on quote unquote normal broadcast TV, I do like sometimes though they'll put a film like this on and think, oh, it's just some sweet, light hearted comedy. And completely forget that, like, there's people swearing and people drinking, taking drugs and stuff like that. Unfortunately, uh, based the stereotype of the ginger haired person being evil. <laughs> So close. But even that though, that's one thing though as well, and every generation probably thinks this, but like say, with me, my age, watching this, and then walking down the street and it's the 80s, and I know it's the 80s, and you know, even though I think some of the things in this have aged a lot better than people think, that like I really can identify with that like of just saying, walking down the street of like say sometimes if you know I've lost some at all fell over or something and just oh I'm dead disappointed I do kind of like though that like because I did have posters up in the 80s but I don't know why when you see especially newer versions if you watch something like say excuse me and I don't mean this nasty because it's a great show but something like the Goldbergs or something like that which is like a TV show now which is set in the 80s and even say films from the time I feel like kids did have posters up I did have posters up but at the same time I feel like it's one of them things where they just seem like the posters are like these great one sheets of like films where all these amazing posters they're like you know they're all from like Athena or something like that whereas you would have posters up but they'd be like from like a magazine they'd be like almost A4 sized or something or like you know what pulled out I, I had so many posters just pulled out of like these free video shop magazines and stuff like that when you see in films they've got like you know these perfect cinema posters up and things like that like say slight exaggeration but that's sometimes I feel like even though this was filmed in the 80s it was made in the 80s and you know obviously Corey Feldman and Corey Hayne were basically kids in the 80s so they'd you know they'd know what was they'd probably look at something like oh, this not quite right it just seems a little bit too stylized. I like how he's there trying to sort of play off like, oh well, you know, I'll take the call later on or whatever, and you're like, oh. but what I really feel like though, as well, like saying some films in. Like I say, obviously, it really helps when something's filmed at that time. You know, it's it's not it's not that hard to recreate something if it's just there in front of you. But he really does feel like an eight. They feel like an eighties mum and dad, like you know. Um, sound effects record. That's what you always see in like comedy films as well, though, like a sound effects record or someone that can play sound effects. And I think I've had like about one in my entire life. In fact, I don't know if I've ever had a sound effects record thinking about it. You, I've got, I've got ones that where it's like test your stereo, like you know, it's like it pans from left to right. It'd be like a train going down the tracks or something. <gasps> I was watching what's funny because this bit yesterday, and sometimes like say you watch films with your parents or people that sometimes like almost like they just think films are like hundred percent real, and they're like, oh my god, you can. I even got a bit of that yesterday where I was watching this, like thinking. Oh my god, don't see the test fail thing. It's like, no, the test, these fail these tests. Mercedes date fast songs. Number of times I've done like a mixtape now and sort of um, wrote on his, not like date songs because it's not that hip, but uh, like fast songs or uh, party songs or TV themes or something like that. But it's like there, there. This is where, and obviously the they're obviously a relatively well-off family, so it's not like, not like oh, it's a big goof or whatever. But like there, the thought of having like a house where all the phones are on the same line and everything. Um, I don't know if I knew anybody that had that in the eighties. I think my sister was one of the first people I knew who had a phone upstairs and downstairs. I'm pretty sure she didn't do that until like about. 
and it's like even like there, I mean, you don't wish you could tell it's not booze, margaritas, I don't know, I don't know what champagne looks like, but like even like there, even though I think it's per- it's still perfectly legal if you're a parent that you can you can let your kid drink in your house and stuff like that, if you know, it's under your say so and everything, but like there, giving a kid booze, you know, I think maybe I'll be giving him like crack or something. And it's like there, I know there's a poster of like a red telephone box uh, behind him, but it's, um, again, it's nice clockwise uh, reference. Uh, but this is funny, so when I was watching this as well yesterday, I thought, God, that guy's like, I imagine being a Twitter user now. He's got that proper, like, hipster vibe to him, like, you know. I like here where, like, d- like again, it's like when she just shouts, like, a daughter for come down. I feel like that was a quite a good character trait, like, you know, it's like... But she's like being not like passive aggressive kind of thing, like you know, but not even really passive. Is it? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, but it's like sort of. I don't know. I have like I, I, anything. The, the slightest connection, like, oh, it's the same. Uh, but one thing I did, I did think would be funny well, in my mind, a funny video to do: license to drive versus license to kill. But can you believe this was a pretty big film from 1988, and a pretty big film from 1989 was License to Kill. <laughs> Chill, it says on that People magazine, though. that was a, another good 80s film. But what I always think it's quite funny as well because I always feel like, say, especially in comedies, but just say generally that, like, if you've got a guy write or direct a film, and sometimes, like, I think that's something like John Carpenter's Halloween, I think that's why it worked really well, is that, um, like, John Carpenter wrote the, ooh, the scary bits, and Deborah Hill wrote the, the women bits, but it's like, do women lie upside down eating ice cream while reading magazines? It's like, yeah, probably. I mean, who, who knows? We, we'll never know. Even that's quite funny over there, like, in. I said, what you do now is deep sea fishing. And when you like, that's one thing I always think, like, say, sometimes if you just say, like say, I don't know all that now, but if I doze off and the phone rings and you do some spick stuff, and I feel like, you know, even if somebody says, Hi Dave, you're right, like, uh, yeah, well, uh. <laughs> But these are the kind of, oh, this is good as well, it breaks the fourth wall. That's actually kind of funny if you think about it though, because like, I say he does it in the trailer, he does it actually in the film. But I always find that really fascinating if it's like say a film like say Ferris Bueller where he does it all the time. And then it almost becomes like part of the fabric of the film or say in trading places where it happens quite a few things happen like two or three times. But I think that's the only time it happens in the film, like I say he does it in the trailer as well. But that's kind of cause it kind of the catch you off like, oh. And even to this day, I don't know if it's because Hardly anybody, if you do the vast majority of things, people don't look into the camera. But I think there's just that such a weird connection if once we look down the barrel of a lens and you're like, oh, it's like instantly just catches you like off guard, like kind of thing. I'm thinking of that line from uh, Ghostbusters 3 when uh, Patty says, It's a Cadillac. Okay, also 50 cents car and get rich or die trying was a Cadillac. I mean, you know, how many films got Cadillacs in, but they're the uh, the ones that spring to mind. But even that, I think, is a really ne- neat touch there. You know, he's stealing this really cool car. But the uh, license plate says Grandpa. Right? Yeah, but the, them scenes there of him trying to get out of the house and stuff like that. But that I always find, sometimes to me, them scenes are more sort of tense. Then, like, you know, if you see somebody like try and rob a bank or something, or trying to sneak past some armed guard or something, because you just feel like there's like sort of base in reality, or sort of, um, I don't know, kind of like, you know, I think everybody's a kid, you've had to sort of, you know, you if you five minutes late coming in school, or you, I don't know, you just there's, you see some kid down the road you don't want to see, and you're just like, you know, it, it, it's kind of you, you could definitely identify with it.
I always think it's funny as well when something literally is only a few steps, but sometimes it may as well be like 5,000 yards away. Oh no. But that's the other thing as well, with like clockwise, how John Cleese got like a digital watch in there. But I do think it's fascinating about digital watches though, how you still get digital watches, and especially if you're a sport person or you're a runner or something, you probably, you know, uh, I'll say indefensible, that's what, uh, what's the word? Um, you can't do without them anyway, but. Um, yeah, the, but like in the sense that like I think it's funny a digital watch like in the age of like even James Bond had digital watch and stuff like that. But when you think that like now digital watches are almost considered a little bit naff and like then they were like the future, <laughs> even though they, you know they weren't invented in the eighties like you know like you know, nineteen seventy four was one of the very first digital watches or well, commercial digital watches at least. So it's like, but it's gone from this thing of being like you know you basically like. Batman, if you had a digital watch, you know you're like, like a bit like uh, that boy, a uh, uh, quote unquote boyfriend that not, uh, no, not her boyfriend, uh, sorry, Corey Haim's sister's boyfriend that not under all, you feel like a total hipster now if you have a digital watch. Now they're hipster or a runner. But that's nothing though, as well about 80s films. I, I always think this, what's funny, this business was funny as well. I was watching this yesterday and it just really stuck out with what, where. The guy's like, let me put your car, and he sees how the other car was parked. He's like, no, I'm all right, so. But the thing I did think was funny, because tipping culture is always considered a bit weird in America, a bit weird for British people, because uh, we don't really do it, or we never used to, as you know, such. But like, but this uh, valet guy says, where's my tip? And he's like, tip for what? You just stood there. I mean, it was like a comedy, so again, you've got to take it a little bit of the greatness of the country's been put there for comedy purposes, but he's still like, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm sure the guy towing the truck is um, Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 desktop publishing it's out on that side then. Well, things change, eh? Yeah, but this one thing as well, watching, say, um, you know, I love how all the cars are really cool. I say it's meant to be, you know, a, a well-to-do area. That guy's there is awesome. The guy, uh, but what was I going to say? Um, yeah, but it's a bit like watching when you watch the cry kids and kid as an adult. You think, God, oh, Ralph Macchio deserved a lot of those beatings. You know, no, no excuse. But uh, it was like that. She's a really horrible person. Really. She's like she walked off from Corey Haynes. She won't bother about his car getting knackered. She was like she even scraped her heels on the car later on. I mean, you know, it's like you know, you know people say, oh, you know. Uh, you know, equality, you know, you know, it should be treated the same, you know, no, no two ways about it, but I do think it's funny, if this was like, if Corey Haim was doing that, they'd be like, oh, oh, look at that, you know, it'd be like, it's such a, you know, but it's like, I think she even slapped him in the face, I mean, to, you know, to be fair, it's probably not the, uh, it's like, that's what I always think is quite funny again, you know, the way, you know, say 20, tw 10, 20 years from now, you know, this film will be like, oh my god, but like there, she just slapped a bloke in the face and stole some beer. Like, it's like, oh, okay, like, you know, it's it's such a funny thing. Yeah, desktop publishing. I, I think I might have said that's another commentary book talking about like horror and stuff, because I think this, this, I think this tow truck guy's leather face. And I still always think he is, maybe he isn't thinking about it. Um, or a. M m no, not, it might not be leather face from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, it might be. Uh, Text Chainsaw Massacre 3, which is called Leatherface. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's quite quite, uh, quite, 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 easy for me to say. Um, that, yeah, there's this UK, or there was a UK horror magazine called Fear, and there was a Terminator 2 cover, and they were boasting about how it was done on like Photoshop, I'm saying, we've got this new Photoshop program, it's amazing, you won't believe it. And, like, you know, we did it all on a computer. Oh yeah, it's like wow, times change. Tonka, Tonka Five, he says on that. It's like a real, a real Tonka truck. Do you still make that? I always remember that. Uh, oh, I remember it in the eighties. Like there are these toys that can't be destroyed, which is like a challenge. I'm sure that was probably, you know, I've probably said this on every fifth commentary, but always makes me laugh at the eighties to say. Oh, CDs, they were indestructible. I don't think that ever got said, or if it did, it got said like once, like, you know. 
you know, but these uh, Tonka cars that I remember having as a kid, and there was always this myth or rumour that was like, you know, they never wear out, and weirdly, I haven't seen one for like 30 years. Wonder how many of them. Oh, uh, Ninten Nintendo, Whirlpool, Panasonic, Sharp, Sanyo, JVC, RCA, I think nearly all them companies are still going there. It's so fascinating though, like, I don't feel like I've said it hundred times but like, if she's drinking there, and I know she's, I don't think they ever do drink and drive, but I do think it's kind of funny though that like, if this was a brand new film now, like aimed at kids, I wonder if there would be some like, huge outcry, very probably, a huge, I must not bought the champagne as well, like, another like, at least two people. <laughs> It's like there that shot of like filming at night. I'm sure there's probably some lighting behind the camera, but I do always think it's quite funny that like again I always feel like that's something sign of a really good filmmaker because even now I really struggle to film in low light because basically because I've done no research into the matter even though I did uh, six months of film studies at college. Uh, but yeah, when you see stuff filmed, you know, quote unquote, at night in a movie, and it just looks nice. If this was like done on like a phone or half decent camera where the lighting wasn't um, done properly it would look terrible it's a great shot I always love seeing shots of cities though and like I think I've said this on loads of commentaries I've always got like a proper nutcase saying this <laughs> even more so than normal but I think you can sort of tell I feel like that looks like an 80s city where you could probably literally go to that exact same location today take a photograph it would look almost identical unless some huge giant building's been built or something but to tell that same shot would look pretty similar but I feel like you, that just felt like the 80s to me, and it could be actually a good, ch good challenge. I don't know who, where, where, who's going to do this challenge for me, but I feel like they'd be quite funny to say somebody take screen grabs from like say 10 films and see if I could pick the 80s ones just from the city. Uh, actually, I might try and do that and get somebody to do that for me. I think it'd be kind of cool. But it's like here, like this, where allegedly now people don't know what tapes are, even though like I literally went to the record shop the other day and they still sell you know, one or two tapes and stuff. But I do think it's quite funny that like literally one of the last times I went to my mate's car, yeah, I played some tapes. You know, I can't believe I actually know people who let them play tapes in their car. But it's like to me, it's like I've still been in cars in 2017 that have got tape decks in the cars, and you know this was like 1988, and it's still the same. It's still the same to me anyway. But like it's like them travelling rugs there, like what's on the bonnet of the car, I do you think it's funny, because there's like literally one behind me where me cat Mindy's on it, and I do think it's funny, but like them travelling travelling rugs, I feel like I'm 42 years old, I've never seen anybody buy a travelling rug, anybody roughly my age owns a travelling rug, <laughs> it's like I think my mum gave me my travelling rug, but you know, it's like, and I'm pretty sure you can still get them, but I, I never see them for sale, I never see anybody buy them, they're always just there. Like he's got some like I don't like swooshy go that way. The like swooshy go that way. Mm. My other cat came in. Hi, nuts. Just took his shoes off there after the. But it's like there. though what's really funny though because it shows though a you quote 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 change his appearance because like when I saw this as a kid. I don't know, like probably like thoughts of a car being scratched, but probably didn't think that much of it. No, it's like she's scratching the car. <laughs> What's well, been this one thing as well, and I it's not necessarily a goof, but I don't really like pointing out goofs in films, especially really minor things that are like, did you see this thing? But I found out a bit of trivia once that like, and it once you spot it, it's kind of like. It's like, uh, oh yeah, but if you if you don't want to hear this goof, uh, don't listen in. Five, four, three, two, one. But Corey, well, as I say, it's not even really a goof. Uh, but Corey Feldman, nearly every scene, can't keep his mouth closed. It's always like open a little bit. Uh, it was just like in all of his films, basically. But once you know, though, it's like, yeah, he doesn't ever close his mouth. <laughs> it's like, I can't remember where I heard it. No, if it was on like. Um, to Corey's TV show or uh, IMDB or something like that, but it's like, which you know that it's like, yeah, he never closes his mouth. Oh. But even like that, what well, that's funny there because there's so many jokes in this film that like, 
and again this is probably not even that far off an exaggeration but like there she fell asleep in his lap and like now you actually think oh that looks a bit rude or whatever but like honestly I'm pretty sure probably the first five times I saw this movie I didn't get that gag <laughs> Some Miss Miss World on. A Vivitar flash and a Nick on camera too. Uh, well, the Nick on camera's gone out. The Vivitar already got all the <laughs> oh in uh, camera terms. Let's fix the car. But it's like there, there, that quick little reversal shot like there, it's like a, a two second thing on film like there's a shot of him just lining the camera up and then you saw it from the back of like the shot being taken. But I do think, think again, you know, you watch this with a quote quote normal person who doesn't give two stuffs about film, they would never think about that was a reversal shot and like, you know, just like you just see this stuff. but that's a line in this and I think it's one dude oh I think somebody said on him IMDB funnily enough that it's like this sort of um it was a Mindy cameo, I don't know, I'm sure which cat it was, wasn't it? Uh, but, um, that, yeah, it's like this sort of, uh, was it undisputed, that's strong word, why can't I think of the right word? <laughs> uh, it's a sort of um, underrated comedy classic. What, what was that word I was trying to think of where it'd be, um, oh, a word when you really, you can't do without a certain thing when I was talking about digital watching, I'm not, I can absolutely kick myself when I think of that word. Uh, but, yeah, and, um, like if I was watching this, like say with anybody who didn't get too stuff about film, you wouldn't realise just how complicated it was to do. Like there are these good screen really smoke a cigar. But uh was that more of a good thing? We're not that adverts for on that bus station. But um uh, one line in this that I feel that's like really underrated, probably one of the best lines of all time, and I'm pretty sure it's in this film, where uh Heather Graham's passed out and they put her in the boot of the car. I think one of the policemen opens the car and he says, what the hell's this? And he goes, my date? <laughs> and it's one of those lines where I feel like, you know, I know some of these countdowns are the worst things you can ever watch, like they're the most patronising and stupid things you can ever watch. These like 100 best bad guys in movies or the 100 best uh, scary scenes or something like that. But I do generally think that's a line that will probably never ever get mentioned in the, you know, the best comedy comedy lines in a film, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. That's your song with Even that's always a great. That I like that shot there of the uh, light down the street and it's sort of just being broken by that like sign sticking out from that building. But that's always a great uh, scene in movies though as well where you think they're going to have a race and the other person either just goes in reverse or stops or doesn't go because you're so primed for it just dropping. You think, oh, what's going to happen? Then the other person just like just shoots off. It's like always like there, like uh, my um, my experience with women. But like I, I feel like there, you know, in this like this age of like I'm so oh it should be banned or something like that. But like like there when like yeah you get out of bed make me a sandwich. It's just like oh, what like like I know she's pregnant and it's like little it just it's just little things like that like like where the grave slap that guy. And I, I'm not really it doesn't you know the things like that they don't really uh, you know. You know, it's like, you know, you've got like it's real life and stuff like that happens, but I do think it's kind of funny that, like you say, when you look at some things that have aged from the 80s that are really like you think, Oh god, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, I'm glad we don't do that anymore. And then sometimes, though, when you'll see like a woman hit a bloke in a film, and it's just like, Well, uh, <laughs> it's like one of those are, like really like mad things in a way. That's a good shot, though. I just think that's quite good because, like, there. you know, a car driving really slow and just cars going around it again, it's that thing of, Well. You know, in the big scheme of things, it's not the the most dangerous stunt in the world. But that said, I mean, you know, it's one of these things where it's like, well, kind of like, you know, that that would be set up, that would be sort of, you know, planned out and all this kind of stuff and planning permission and film filming permits. And all, I don't know what planning permission is going to be there, but filming permits and stuff like that. So, 
it'll be interesting to try and get the actual uh, I wasn't going to say this just also sort of the make and model of that camera but the actual I think I was going to say the, the actual tapes that were in that car it was like there where he's just taking pictures of here there that's obviously way dodgy but I think it's one of these funny things that like when you this was such a light hearted throwaway family fun and all this and like now this would be like like just I, I'd, I'd almost like to do a remake of this because I'm quite like remakes anyway it would almost like them do like a shot for shot remake of this and not change one single element and just see if anybody complained or was like oh you can't do that nowadays or I like that shot there the uh, the long shot of seeing the camera flashing in the car and the That's good. I can't quite remember that shot of him seeing like the reflection. Uh, not, but that's one thing. I still to this day, if, if anybody just uh, this commentary or any of my previous commentaries, uh, I sometimes find it hard to describe stuff. But that's got to be one of the hardest things I think to describe that feeling of if you look quickly at the sun or a camera flash goes off in your face and you kind of see the sort of last little bits of it fading away from your eyes like that's such a that's such a great stunt to swag into with that fence <laughs> but I think it's like here where the camera sorry where the camera where the car sort of skids like that into the perfect pockets but I think I'll do it again in a minute but that's one of those things where oh this film is semi realistic and then I kind of love like something like that that would like never happen in a million years Although I did see a clip, where did I see it? Might have been on Instagram or something like that. But this kid going across the street on like a push bike, and this truck coming the other way, and like I think a buzz hit it, or some weird circumstance like that, and and the the van like like flipped around this kid and didn't hit this kid, and you're like, you know, as far as I know, no, you know, nobody in the truck got it, nobody in this buzz got it, nobody in the, this kid crossing the road on this bike didn't get it. You just think like, just for like a fraction of him. You know, an inch the other way. You're like, I love that. Like, to, like there was like, was that like a tiny scratch on the car? That, that you know, by the end of the film, it's like totally destroyed. But I think I've, I must have said this on loads of things as well. But like here, you know, they're out late at night and stuff like that. But I can almost, I think Jamie Lee Curtis said, like, you know, even as an adult, you know, she doesn't go, you know, she counts on one hand how many times she's been out past midnight just partying or whatever. But like as a kid, because I was like, you know, really introverted. I knew about like two people. Uh, I didn't really go that many places. So, like any time, nearly for any time, I was out late at night. I can remember it. Like you know, it was always such a weird feeling. It's like I'm out at night, even if it was like you know nine o'clock or something. Well, that's always something though as well. And again, yeah, obviously you have to take some quotes with like a pinch of salt and stuff like that. But if these really were really baked for most of their scenes, any time I've tried film drunk or do a commentary drunk, I play it back and I feel like I can instantaneously think, oh, I've been drinking there, or, you know, just like, oh, my God. But now actors can even be, I guess, if you, you know, you're high all the time, I guess, you know, it's, um, I guess you get used to it, that's <laughs> my phrase. This was a great scene. I saw this. Uh, him, the, the, you remember the scene day where how dodgy does that look? He's lifting his uh, what looks like his girlfriend up after she's passed out. <laughs> but again, I always think this is quite funny because it's it's not strictly true. Because I say, when I was a kid, we have like McDonald's and stuff like that. But I feel like these big like these big sort of takeout places and stuff like that. That like it it was just in the 80s just sort of creeping in like it was getting more and more I was, like, I'm pretty sure I didn't go with Burger King until the 90s there could very well have been some in the UK but in Staffordshire I'm pretty sure we didn't get a Burger King until 92, 93 somewhere around that ballpark so you know like I said obviously been McDonald's and stuff but these really big because like even the McDonald's in my local town centre was relatively small it's still there it's like you know it's you know, it's, it's big enough but it's not this huge ginormous I need to say ginormo it's not this huge giant thing uh, but yeah these like these big huge diners like uh, and again you know growing up in a small town you probably if I went to London in 1988 there'd be a huge giant McDonald's you know and like these even these ones where like they put the tray on the side of the car uh, I, you know I, again I'm not the most outdoorsy outgoing kind of person so 
again, if anybody's actually listening to, I'm not just talking to myself, if anybody's listened to this part of the country, yeah, there's like some sort of the car from American Graffiti there. But yeah, I don't know if we had anything like this in the UK in the um, um, 1980s or before, maybe. I, I, what's weird though, I can almost just not imagine having this in the 80s, but having it in like the 70s or the 60s or something. And that's one thing I always do think is quite funny, is there? Like, you know, the way things were manufactured and printing got better and technology, you know, for, you know, filming stuff, for, you know, things like that and recording stuff kept, always keeps getting better and better and better. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like you look at something like this and, like, uh, there's all, I know, okay, so it's a film, so again, you've got to take it with a grain of salt, but, oh, uh, there's neon on everything and everything's really lit up and really bright and there's, like, arcade machines everywhere and all the staff have got these amazing uniforms and they roller skating and they, you know, they put these trays on the, on the cars and stuff and I feel like even now, like, the cinema opened in the other town up the road because I live right close to two towns and uh, and like one's my local town and one's my other town but the, a cinema opened in the town up the road like a brand new like nine million pound or twenty million pound cine world wherever it was and it's one of the most soulless places you've ever been to and I kind of like and it's got all like restaurants and cafes and they're, they're kind of nice and stuff but it's just so it's, and again it's like a movie so you've got to you know you've got to just well this could be totally fake and probably is but just I feel like this seems quite realistic you think yeah they probably would bring you if you don't like that or, or you know at the very least you know clip it on the side of a car or something and I just can't almost imagine it ever happening in the UK even now let alone then oh no Ooh, ah. he's not the uh, he's not the fries bag of basket of fries Look when he tries to get his burger though out of the uh Like even there though that looked like a, a real big proper hamburger. And you know, even though I love McDonald's where you compare like quote unquote real food to like McDonald's or, like McDonald's it like I don't it just seems like McDonald's seems like a toy burger and that even that you know, even on film, but I don't know what that means. It looks like that's a really good stunt as well, like, you got flipped off the uh, car bonnet there. That must be a funny, like, say, thing for a stuntman, though. The way that, like, say, you know, say, if you're a stuntman and you, and you pretend to be like Batman or you pretend to be like James Bond, so it's like, you pretend to be in a film, a Corey Hay, <laughs> which, you know, I guess in the 80s was quite uh, a nice claim to fame. That it looks like, that actually looked like late, it either looked really late or really early, there's like no cars on the road. But this is always a great thing in movies, I think, uh, VHS is there. What's that so funny? I've never noticed before. But the Warner boxes. That I've seen more people recreate recently saying oh I'm recreating those old 80s Warner Brothers boxes but I was never familiar with those American ones so it seems funny that I'm more familiar now with seeing the recreate <coughs> oh, I thought she was going to get away with sneezing I know we didn't uh, sound too loud through the speakers but uh, yeah I'm more familiar with seeing the uh, the reproduction Warner Brothers boxes like that than the actual real ones but uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, that's one thing you always see in movies that like somebody watching TV and they always see they either always see somebody that uh, they know or they just look away just as the person's coming on screen who they who they know. But it's like that though when I was I, I almost almost sort of kind of forgot about this scene. But when I was saying about like that um, Corey Hames girlfriend boyfriend, I really should know the character names. But uh, like, I felt like nowadays he'd be like. Um, Twitter user or like uh, you know on Facebook all the time or something like that and now he's like protesting and again there's nothing wrong with that but it, it kind of ties in with that like you know oh, oh don't do that stop the warmongers not those films are though And even like there, though, like in real control TV, like, and again, this sounds like a joke, but I honestly feel like I didn't get a remote control TV until really late 99. You know, like, you know, and like saying it's proper first world problems, or well, I, I didn't have a remote control TV until, I mean, there's one in the, like, the living room and stuff, but like, you know, like in my bedroom or, you know, God, it just seems like. 
Now, portable, portable remote control TVs almost feel made up to me. Like in the 80s, what's always that funny, I'm always the first person to sort of say, oh, we had mobile phones in the 80s, we had this in the 80s, we had that in the 80s. To me, a remote control colour TV in the 80s, like, what, what, what did they do with a NASA or something? Donnelly. I don't know why I'm so used to those. Well, like on that policeman's badge, it said Don Donnelly. I'm so used to looking for Easter eggs in trivia. I'm like, oh, is that the name of the rat or something? <laughs> Christ license and what's funny uh, it says a lot about a lot of the films I watch but I feel like nearly every film I watch somebody's got like they've either forgot the license or haven't got the license or the license is like a picture of Indiana Jones or something What's interesting as well, because again, I feel like it's one of those things where they say people who when you say, well, it was Brett Spiner for a second, but when people say like they don't, you know, who wrote a film and directed a film, like, oh, you, what is you ignorant? I don't do. But like the other kid in that car, right now, if somebody like, like put a gun to me head and said like, who's that? Who played that other kid? I'm like, I don't know. It's like that. Though even that's like it, just it's such a great scene, you know, the way like. You know, this that that drunk guy is obviously and again, you have know, drink driving, you can't condone it and it's really terrible and obviously you know, a lot of people have like been in you know, really bad situations because of it, but like it's like it there's something kinda of so you know, it's like this throwaway light hearted comedy, it's got like a drunk driver in it. Oh no. The I mean, that's an incredible line. I mean, what's this, my date? I mean, I really think that that is something that's like... Oh, uh, I mean, that really is like one of those things to me, and like, what a mad set of circumstances, like I said before, about like things like um, Clockwise. My favourite kind of films, oh, it seems a lot of my favourite kind of comedies especially, are these ones where they start off quite small, like it's just like a kid having a day off school or like you know, that clockwise like a teacher late for an appointment and they just take one slight wrong turn or you know they forget one little thing and then it just it, it completely escalates into this bizarro set of circumstances like you know. And even like that though, even I dare say I could probably do with my very limited driving experience. Uh, I have sat in the driver's seat of a car and not pressed the accelerator a couple of times. But like even there, like when you just close the boot in the car, drove away straight away. I mean, you know, if you're a stunt driver, you go wait for the boot to be closed, drive away. But it's just, it's just the, the, the nice timing of it, like, you know, it's like the boot closes and the car just bombs off. I know this is even like, again, it's one of those things where. Um, it, you, know, you, can't, you can't really justify but it makes such a great comedy scene that like he's got their car he loves all this old fashioned music because it's from like his era and stuff I don't know, he would not necessarily like Frank Sinatra and all that kind of stuff but at the same time like I do think like again like, he's like drinking to all those miniatures you line them up there and I don't even really like you know these like sort of gross out kind of comedy, but yeah, you know, even like you know, he throws up in the car, and he, but you don't really see it. And stuff. So you can see that's kind of like, and it's, you think, oh, they try and keep this car really clean and not get damaged, and he's like spraying beer everywhere and stuff, and you know he's like scraping it all. And it's like, oh my god. Because like I said before, what again? You know, it probably says more about me than it does you know, about a lot of things. But like to me, like there. Like this car, like getting scraped and the and the bumper falling off there, is more like kind of like ah! like you know if somebody said to me like I don't know they were making a film where you know they had to like you know you know I don't know steal some some the desktop plans or something I don't know no but like you know if, if there was a film where like oh, the bottles look like they were plastic then I'm pretty sure it would be glass that's an interesting touch <laughs> it's got a lime though I mean that 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 that's one thing that I was just kind of saying like. You know that that the guy who stole the car is just cutting this lime up for his drink. That is an absolutely brilliant touch. And like when it was said, the, like the production design, like Lawrence G. Paul and stuff. But again, I think that's where these films really 
that extra level of quality like I think like all nowadays but like you do still get some really good cheap comedies like you know things like Napoleon Dynamite which isn't new <laughs> but you know you get you know comedies that are made for nothing or horror films that are made for nothing and they're absolutely brilliant but I feel like with a film like this that like like say just the uh, you know the the model of cars the you know like say that those little miniatures of like booze and stuff and then like you know getting that lime out is just that's just the icing on the cake that's just genius that is you know it's and I always think as well though about like say something like this is that again it's like say with car chases if you're just doing a car chase and don't get me wrong it's really elaborate and you know you, you people always keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing what you can do in a car chase you know you've got to outdo every you know, hundred years worth of car chases but I feel like something like this there you've obviously got to make it elaborate but you've also got to make it you know it's a drunk guy driving a car and the kids are driving the car and you, and you it's kind of like a, an interesting take on it you know you you can't necessarily have the car like you know flipping upside down although it probably wouldn't be that unrealistic necessarily it's like there they were like you know they've obviously you know got you know I don't know why I keep saying planning permission but they've got like you know filming permission or what you would assume and I do kind of um, love that though that like again it's that thing where I feel like some people just could watch this and go, yeah, they're just on the road and there's no cars around. Uh, but like to me, I almost get, and this probably shows, you know, I'm completely geeky but in a totally different way than most people. But I kind of geek out a little bit at things like that, that sort of, you know, most people when they talk about films, they think of like all the really glamorous jobs like acting and directing and sort of like, you know, anytime you see anybody who wants to be anything to do with the movies, like, I'm going to be a director or, you know, at the, at the most maybe like an editor or something or, something, you know, can score a movie or something. But like when there's real proper unsung heroes, like even in the credits in this are like not like normal credits, it's like and it's white text on a blue screen or something. But something like, say, all the all these sort of stunts in this in finding nine 1974 Cadillacs I mean where you know I, I've always been fascinated by stuff like that there the, the effort and talent involved all that kind of stuff just getting through a road closer I know okay there's a weird zoom into it then Stuck just on the edge. That could be a good actual mashup eclipse uh, for him. A load of cars just as they've uh, stopped just before they fly off the edge of a cliff or something. Dad, really, <laughs> Oh, I think even that though as well. That's like always one of them things that where it's like it's such a great sort of uh, that the aftermath of like seeing oh my god, you know, like the cars totally destroyed another like half a foot they would have flew off that cliff <laughs> or you know into that quarry. Uh, who is this guy? Love when you throw it, but even, but even like there though, this is that thing as well where, again, you know, it could be you know, even though it was like political correctness, no, but even though like, you know, I don't think there was as much controversy years ago. You could drink and smoke and do all these crazy things in films, so people wouldn't. This is good when they hit the windscreen smashes, but like there, though, he just threw his keys away. That sort of like, even then, and this is what I'm saying about like in films, I find fascinating when people we didn't know about fatty foods in our day we didn't know about brushing your teeth and we didn't know about this and we didn't know about that and it's like there you've literally got a kid in an 80s movie throwing away some of his car keys because they knew that person had been drinking and they're saying friends don't let friends drive drunk and I, I always found that really fascinating that like I'm terrible for it in a lot of ways that like like I think oh well, you know sometimes we didn't you know I feel like sometimes I grew up in like freaking Flintstone times but the more I look at it like oh, we did have computers mobile phones and all these different things in kind of fact but this is one thing as well I think one of the more recent times I saw this 
and I had like a sort of numb flashback to something that didn't really ever happen because I when they were going home and stuff like that and they were all like you know, the parents waking up and all this kind of stuff but I think it was actually when Corey Hayne was still alive as well but it made me sort of I got kind of really nostalgic because I, I'm up said this on commentaries as well but there's this really funny thing if we used to have this thing called the carnival like where I grew up and every year they'd have like a parade and a fair and all this kind of stuff but one, one of my favourite parts was when everybody started filtering home about like four or five o'clock and there'd just be a handful of people in different parts of town and you'd see people slowly walking back and you'd get in and you'd put the TV on it'd be nearly always like Firefox or Police Academy or something or well, as it was in my mind anyway but like these scenes here of like you know, Corey Haim, you know, dropping his girlfriend off and like say, you know, like, but it's like there, so you see movies all the time. Um, I should imagine Heather Graham's not the most heaviest of people in the world, but I don't know, especially for like multiple takes, like if I to pick somebody up like that, like, <laughs> like, but yeah, just these scenes here, just always kind of, just get me really happy like this, like, oh, you know, you got through the night and you're in, it's like, oh. That's one thing as well about loads of it getting through the night, but like I've started getting into the habit of listening to commentaries, not my own amazingly, of uh, other people's commentaries when I'm in getting sleep. And so like now it's like uh, I hope uh, I hope I can do for you what other what the commentary teams have done for me. Uh, but there's something about like you know three o'clock in the morning or you know if you're having a last nice afternoon nap of listening to a, a, a commentary track. I remember it's a great Robin Williams joke though where he's saying about like uh, like man I'll, I'm pretty sure it's Robin Williams where he's saying like a man will be up and he's like oh, he's taking his wife there to the hospital and he's like oh is that one of the, the contractions like no he's tied his shoes too tight but like in Robin Williams saying like you know you would uh, try and do the breathe like <laughs> It's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, like no use whatsoever. Like, like I'm pretty sure. Again, you know, I've had you know no experience uh, in this field whatsoever. But like, um, in terms of like, uh, you know, like I wonder if again, saying no times change. But years ago, a man would just go to the pub or whatever, or not even know when the wife was giving birth. But I wonder if it's actually better or worse now that a lot of men do watch their wives giving birth. Probably, probably. <laughs> This is a really great shot though there, I mean, like there, they're just talking there and obviously there could have been some kind of direct, some kind of director going, the car is in shot now, and you know, they just react to it as well. Or, you know, I thought that was a really nice shot, especially in the car, just pulling up there. But I really think there, like the clothes he's wearing, and like, even the clothes the woman's wearing, because it's just in like pyjamas, that you could see that shot and they that doesn't particularly look super eight that looks really real I, I feel like you could, I've seen people dress like that today <laughs> I'm sure somebody's driving a car outside with their phone ringing on like a speakerphone <laughs> I was like what the hell is that <gasps> like do you hear the music <laughs> Really. I love the shot here where she looks through the uh, the window and uh, Corey Hames like sleeping in the car. It's probably got that Ferris Bueller's Day Off vibe to it where um, you know, the Ferrari gets destroyed. I love the shot here though of like um, like how the dad's like, you've got it, you did have a college fund, it's gone. You had like a stereo, it's gone. <laughs> like all this. But there's one shot here where his wife starts getting into labour, and I think even he almost breaks the f fourth wall a little. He's like, what? Like, uh... and even though, like this here, like they shot that of him. These two just walking around the car and stuff like that. And again, like, you know, in the big scheme of things, like the opening to Goodfellas, which I assume is quite good. I think it was on a classic scenes tape once, and it's like a one shot thing. Uh, but yeah, like there, you know, like the different 
the different uh, I'm sure you did just look into the camera then I know it says about commentary tracks as well I've only done like about 150 of them now but I, every so often I feel like I've got gas even when I've been drinking like I want purple time and I feel like I suddenly suddenly want feel like I'm going to start sneezing <laughs> he can drive the, he can drive his land he's biting him how many comedies there is of a man biting a woman? <laughs> Which is a sentence I wasn't expecting to say today. I mean, that's, uh, again, I should imagine when you just about give birth, you probably would be biting somebody. I don't know. But, um, like, there, that, anyway, that's such, like, movie. That looks really like the road where um, Aqual Foley um, has to get rid of the second team, uh, the anti-banana people. <laughs> Could be. But yeah, no, she wants the dad to sit in the back seat, and so he's he's got to drive to the hospital. Anything one gear reverse? But that's always like I know I've said this on like pretty much every <laughs> recording myself to about film I've ever done. But I think that's quite funny. You know, even in the movies, or not in the, in the movies, but like when you hear people talking about like Americans, you say, "Oh well, you know, Americans are this, Americans are that," but they can't drive stick or they can't drive a car with gears. You watch almost absolutely anything in America, the car's got gears in it. <laughs> yeah, I say probably pure cinematic. I don't know, but it's like as if it says, "Oh, we've never heard of gears in America, apart from in everything we've ever recorded on film." <laughs> That's a good shot. The wind blowing the it says California on a building there, I'm sure there's a bit more to it than <laughs> like there there's just like an I don't like but you could really tell that, that might have been that looked like Jeff Speakman then we'd know for if it was. Uh, the guy almost like a waiter guy almost like sort of uh, with the red flag. Almost a wait uh, red even you know, like a bullfighter. Red uh, tablecloth, I should say. Try and meet some of them signs. See, oh, what oh, was that? Oh, he's the Ford Escort again. It looked like you could see the actual uh, fake steering wheel there. I think it was just. Uh, just uh, that's actually quite funny because I've seen this film quite a lot the last few days. It's like, it's like I'm spotting all the shots. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Dragon's Blood, do it the day. Oh no, he did spill his car. No, I think that would have been actually a neat touch if he had to spill his car. He recognised the guy and the guy remembered his name. They're pretty cool. I can't barely remember it. Um, what I did the last two days, I don't remember it. Uh, you know. Slow stuff. I don't know. But that's almost like a great, and there it says Allendale Memorial Hospital, like I said, uh, right at the start of the commentary, seems like a long time ago now. Um, not really. There's <laughs> a pregnant lady. But even this is like, but even I think this is something that I feel like you really genuinely don't. I mean, it's ridiculous in it when a car and a good is just being lifted above it. But to me, I feel like you think, oh, they've got there the, you know, the dad's found out about the car's destroyed and all that kind of stuff. And it's, I almost feel like it's resolved itself. But then there's just something kind of funny about the car just being absolutely destroyed. But I did think about this the other day. That's a quite a nice shot there of the you know, slow pullback. Here we go. Girl is just coming down, but again, I feel like that's one of them stunts there where there's nobody super close to the car, and you know, uh, but there was just a few people in the background there of that girder dropping on the car. 
But if you don't plan that right, you just just you just say you don't take all the glass out, or there's a little tiny bit that just snaps off and flies somewhere. That's a good shot of the uh, dad looking through the um, the eyepiece. What else I was going to say? Oh, that's in the the pictures on the wall. That's so. But to me, that's more eighties than any of the clothes, like pictures of like wildlife and just nature. Like now, everybody's like really hip to this groove, daddy over here, like Sail Joe. You know, we've got no pictures of like, you know, Chuck Norris on the wall or, you know, film posters or something like that. But I thought like years ago people would just have a nice picture of like a tree or a fox or something. I love this how he drops his Yeah, but I was saying this uh, yesterday and I was thinking it myself that like, what a mad ending though with this history of film. A girl named Mercedes, a guy says, uh, I don't need a Cadillac when I've got a Mercedes. And the person named Mercedes drives off in a Golf. <laughs> And we talk about how things have aged and not aged, uh, saying, I own a Mercedes, but on about a woman. That's a good shot there with, like, the, again, this reverse shot of all the uh, family looking down on the car. I was thinking that must be something kind of, again, it's why they're actors and I'm not. But I do kind of like the fact of, like, say, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, action, uh, you know, what we're looking at, a car that's destroyed, and you've got me like, ooh, look at that. Oh, this car's the same. But it's like there, though. How this film is semi-realistic, you know. There's not so much crazy stuff in it, but like there, though, that tow truck just pulled in there at like 40 miles an hour. It's like, like, okay, like would that scene have been any less funny if the if the if it actually may have been a little bit funny? Uh, and it's like to me though, they're like you know, like I've. Uh, Anybody who listens to these things in sequence, I've got a lot of uh, B and me bonnet at me moment of like uh, Rogue One. Like I know I've like, I, I watched like and enjoyed like ninety nine percent of movies, and I really enjoyed Rogue One. But I feel, I feel like oh the the fault in the Death Star is like you know, it just seems a bit like oh it's you know, it's put there on purpose. It's like eh, you know it's just kind of you know rub me up the wrong way a little bit. But like there, like you know of all the crazy things that have happened in this film, and uh, the dad dropping the car off. You know, that's been destroyed just as his girlfriend was pulling up in a car and he throws the car keys. He's that kind of, it's like, yeah, like that would happen in real life, but oh, they faded to blue. Can you believe it? Again, I'm one of the few people uh, who are watching the credits, and if uh, you've made it this far, then uh, congratulations, and I really appreciate it. Hair yeah, stylist. Judy Crown and a crown is a part of your hair, I believe. Fun fact, ladies and gentlemen. Could, uh, I, that may as well be me, uh, random crew member. Oh, craft service says Mark Severg. Bit of the old Billy Ocean there, uh, Billy Ocean Colour Scene. Who did that joke now? I can't remember. Is it, um, uh, must be Mark and Lord on Radio 1. I'll have to get confirmation and confirmment on that. <laughs> Julie on my cat. A camera operator, B camera operator, A camera assistant. I always think that's funny as well. Um, and I think, like, again, you know, I love YouTube and things like that. I was watching a YouTuber the other day and he talked about B roll footage, and I was like, why you do B roll? <laughs> Maybe. School teacher slash bus driver. I think I took it clockwise, though. I think it's the second bill person in the credits is, hasn't got a name. It's just like a. Hi. Head teacher or something like that. The priest Jack Tice, I was say Jack Palant, stunt spy, Dick Durdock. I don't know why. I think I'm so used to seeing like people like Kane Odder's names. I always feel like I wouldn't recognise one of the stunt Jerry Summers, Jerry Summers, Jenny Summers. Original soundtrack, album on records, cassette, and compact disc. The Holy Trinity. Oh, there's a song by performed by the Breakfast Club. Apparently, this uh, probably was attached to every other film in the eighties. Uh, this was uh, going to be a John Hughes film, and um, oh, what's his name? Dave Davidson from Freddy Got Fingered, and Molly Ringwald was going to be the main two characters. Jazzy's in the house by J Tones, DJ Jazzy Jeff the Fresh Prince. Can you believe that? Uncle Phil. I think they even go past one of the uh, Uncle Phil's house, I believe. Uh, so he said on. IMDB don't like just quoting IMDB because it's a little bit pointless. Nina, that Nina People song is apparently an excess song. May as well go for the whole set of all the IMDB facts. 
So there are things like music supervisors and things like that. Those are a bit like, you know, gain permission to sort of uh, gynecology pregnancy exercise program. To me, like, you gain permission to film somewhere or gain the rights to the songs. It's almost as exciting as actually filming them. Number 29049. And we're way above that now. We're not even in 29,000 or 30,000 or 40,000. I believe Blair Witch 3, which was the last one I saw, was 50,500. And there's the end symbol. And keep it locked.